Hey guys, Deathstone Magic here, and I know a couple days ago I promised a mega rant, but I recorded half of it and then completely forgot every other thing I was going to say in it. And like the always prepared plan ahead person that I am, I didn't take any notes. So as soon as I remember what the heck was supposed to go into that video, I will get right on it. But for now, a short story. Oh, and this one uh, doesn't exactly involve pirates or dinosaurs. So back when I used to work an actual normal job instead of owning my own, we'll just say five businesses, that's probably about what it is at this point. So I showed up to work just like any other uh, Monday, actually it was. And, uh, you know, saw a bit of a, a thing going on on the premises. So I walked over to said thing and uh, asked people, you know, the question that's on everybody's mind every Monday, why are there scuba divers here? That's a valid question, considering we didn't do anything related to water, scuba diving, boating. You get the idea. I mean, just, like, pretend we basically sold insurance. That's not even remotely what it was, but that's comparatively the level of weird. If you sell insurance and then you walk in and there's a crowd of people and scuba divers in full gear, you know, you're going to start asking some questions. You're going to start asking, uh, hey, hell of a Monday so far. Why is there scuba divers here? Well, honestly, if I was given enough time, I probably would have come up with the actual solution. Uh, the way the story was told to me is that one of our, unfortunately, more expensive vehicles, uh, it was missing this morning. And everybody's like, okay, where'd you park it? Was it left on, you know, a, a different premises or different lot? Or did somebody take it home, which would be kind of weird? Did somebody move it? Did somebody get here early and already leave with it? You know, everybody's asking questions, calling people. And it comes back to, hey, this is the guy who brought it back last night. And they're saying we brought it back and parked it exactly right there where we were supposed to. You know, locked the door, everything probably couldn't have been stolen. But our incredibly sharp staff uh, noticed some tire marks. Or I should say tire tracks. And uh, they started to wonder because they're thinking, you know... That truck has been having issues with its parking brake. So, something that kind of resembled tracks in a place where you really wouldn't necessarily drive. Uh, plus the fact that the truck didn't feel too keen on, you know, standing still. And you, you follow the evidence, you know, you kind of, you can chronologically see it and you're like... Also, there's a couple inches of the truck sticking up out of the water. And actually, while the other people were looking at the tracks, apparently the other guy's like, well, I mean, that, you know, there's part of the exhaust or whatever. Yep, sticking right up out of the lake. And um, by lake, I mean pond. And by pond, I mean glorified lawn decoration. Now, this truck was a good 12 feet tall. I mean, it, it was big. Apparently, pretty much nobody, and if I recall, including the owners of the business, knew that that pond was... We'll just say 11 feet, 10 inches deep. I mean, for real, this thing was probably less than 50 feet long and like 15 feet across. They must have just about dug it straight down. I mean, it's basically some kind of trap or a moat or technically a swimming pool. But like, seriously, it was just for decoration. It had some lovely rocks around it, you know, typical corporate, whatever. So this truck had slipped all the way in there, totally underwater. Obviously, the truck was totaled. I mean, once you get it that wet, there ain't no coming back from that. I mean, all the electrical stuff was probably corroded, not to mention all kinds of issues with oil and stuff. I don't know. I'm not a damn engine engineer, which actually would be the coolest title slash name ever. But what I do know is that those people were supposed to, um, what do they call that? Chalk the wheels or brick the wheels or whatever you call it. I suppose you would call it chalking the wheels if you used a wheel chalk. So apparently somebody was like, nah, it's fine. I I'm sure it'll be fine. And, and the strange thing is this must have been like a one degree incline. Like th this was not a sloped parking lot in any way. In fact, I'm actually surprised that like the runoff wouldn't go to a sewer grate backwards instead of forwards into the damn pond. Like that's actually really weird now that I think about it. I almost want to drive out there and like take a second look at it now. Oh, but then I remembered I hate that place and I quit for a damn good reason. Oh, also, it's absolutely unequivocally haunted, in case you uh, missed that story. Seriously, I'm there at night, alone, and a rolling chair just goes rolling across the, the, the floor. Just straight up. Like a big, heavy, like, 15-pound steel chair on wheels, you know, real nice padded desk chair. Just goes rolling, just all of a sudden goes rolling. I do have a logical explanation for that and three of the other things that happened, but still, it's, it, it's a creepy place to be. So, two strikes, you're out. I guess I'm never going to step foot on that place again. That's right, I make up the rules. This ain't baseball. Fine, strike three. They didn't pay me enough. 
So there's really two lessons here. Uh, one, use wheel chocks. And two, if scuba divers are at your premises for no apparent reason or immediately apparent reason on a Monday, um, either it's not real and you're dreaming or um, just immediately say, I bet you one of the trucks is in the pond. That'll be super relevant to your daily life at like any kind of job, really. You know what I'm wondering, though? Where do you just get scuba divers? Like, that's we don't live near an ocean. It's freaking Wisconsin. The closest coral reef in Wisconsin is, like, my grandpa's fish tank. I'm not even sure technically those aren't anemones. I wouldn't know the difference. Okay, anemones are squishy and coral is not. Like, is that in the phone book? Can, okay, I'm gonna go look it up. No joke, I'm gonna look it up right now. By the way, by phone book, I mean yellowpages.com. How about that? Type scuba divers in, and it'll actually find some. Don't know where the hell they're scuba diving. <laughs> we have some lovely pools in the area. I mean, technically, and this is gonna piss some of you off, but you know damn well it's true. The Land O Lakes, also known as Minnesota, has less lakes than Wisconsin. Or as I like to phrase it, Wisconsin has more lakes than the Land O'Lakes. See, now I'm wondering how much they would charge if you called them up and you're like, we've got a truck that we need a chain hooked up to the frame so we can pull it out. Which personally, I would have just left it in there, but like I said, oil contaminants, not a good idea. Like, what would they charge for that? I mean, it's got to be hazard pay, even though it's not non-governmental. I mean, I would think it would be weird if it wasn't like some kind of sole proprietorship. But I mean, it's on-site work. That usually starts at 75 minimum. I mean, electrician, plumber, all that, you ain't gonna get them there for lower than 75. So everybody should definitely immediately type scuba divers into Yellow Pages and then your city and call one and ask them what theoretically they would charge to help tow a truck out of a pond. I have to know this. Unfortunately, it's 2.58 a.m. and I can't sleep. In case you haven't caught on from the other videos, I have a pretty bad injury at the moment, ongoing, and uh, I already hit the limit on Tylenol that I can take in a 24-hour period, so now I can't sleep. So this sucks, because I got crap to do tomorrow. And on top of it all, now I don't know how much it costs to hire a scuba diver. You know, this is already starting to feel like kind of a Monday, and it's actually Sunday. Oh well, I'm going to go shoot some more stuff in Borderlands. See y'all next video.